Although each Amazon Echo Show is named for the size of the screen, there are significant differences between each of these smart displays that go beyond that screen and the speaker. So if you're picking out one of these for that special spot in your home, I've got the video just for you. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to help you with seven different indices that we will go through to compare these three smart displays from Amazon. The time codes are down below in the description so if you're looking for something specific you can jump around the video but I did make it so that we could just run through it and you gain knowledge as you go. I mentioned that each of these smart displays are named for their size. Now, this is the Echo Show 5. It is 5.5 inches across and it's measured diagonally whenever we're talking about the screen size. The Echo Show 8 is exactly 8 inches and the Echo Show 10 actually adds 0.1 of an inch to its screen measurement at 10.1. But what's going to matter more than just that screen size is the resolution that you'll experience when you're watching video content on these displays. If we're picking a winner on resolution, the Echo Show 5 is actually a surprise winner here. It has 195 pixels per inch. We drop down to 188 on the Echo Show 8, and unfortunately, the Echo Show 10, the most expensive one, comes in at 149 pixels per inch. That difference in resolution really hasn't impacted how much I watch these displays or how I find the quality of the content over here on the Echo Show 10. It's just fine and actually this is the one I watch video content on the most because it's the bigger screen. But with that video content, a lot of people kind of think that they're going to get more or better video content on a display like this. It's actually exactly the same across all three of these. And you can access the same exact interface and the same exact shows by asking Miss A, Amazon's voice assistant, to go to Video Home. Open Video Home. Here's Video Home. A lot of people wonder about YouTube and there is no specific YouTube app. What happens with all three of these smart displays is that you'll use the onboard Silk browser that Amazon has created for these. There's a couple of nice features to this actually because the onboard or on-screen keyboard that you can tap on allows you to type into search bars but there's also a microphone that would allow you to voice search whenever you'd like. All three of these really have the same accessibility menu and they have the same accessibility features. Things like closed captioning and adjusting for things like color blindness, those are things that you can get. Plus they all have the same tap to miss a feature available on them that allows you to create quick shortcuts for things you do quite often. This is the Echo Show 10 playing Prime Video. You can see the closed captions. It looks really good on the screen. Now here's the Echo Show 8 actually playing from Netflix. You can see the quality is very good, but you'll notice a lot of the movies or videos actually have that stripe where it kind of shrinks the screen size you have access to. Here's the Echo Show 5 playing a video from my YouTube channel and I can let you listen to this one. Then I'm going to add an action. Now the first action is a pretty simple one that I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on that bulb right there. I'm just going to make a quick recommendation for you. If you're really buying this device for the screen, I think the one that splits the cost versus the screen the best is the Echo Show 8. That's the one I'd be looking at in most cases if you're looking to consume video content. There are a number of statistics that say the most likely thing you're going to do with these speakers is to play music or other audio content on them and as such this is a really critical component to the decision you're making. Even if you're not going to use the speakers a ton, well, there are some differences that go beyond just the speaker quality and the power usage you're going to see on these. There's a big difference between where you want to place these throughout your home. The Echo Show 5 has a single 1.65 inch speaker. Now that speaker drives all of the sound out of the bottom of the speaker right here. This is slightly raised, so it comes a little bit off of the table and it's driving sound down into the surface. So if you're putting this on a soft surface, 
that's going to absorb a lot of the sound. So you want to put it on a hard reflective surface and then it's going to drive sound up and out into your space. The Echo Show 8 has two two inch full range speakers on it. Now what happens here is they drive almost entirely out of the side of this speaker. So it's not coming out of the back, it's not coming out of the bottom, this is entirely out of here. It's also not really coming out of the top and what this means is you want to think about the reflection option. This can sound muffled if it's driving sound away from you at all times. So think about placements with this speaker. The Echo Show 10 is an incredible speaker system. That's because they have two one inch tweeters that really fire quite a bit out of the side and a three inch woofer that's firing out of the top of this speaker for the most part. This is because the screen actually obstructs quite a bit when you think about how the sound is gonna come out of the speaker. So Amazon has used that physical limitation in order to create the best sound experience for you. This again does mean though that you can experience a muffled sound if you place this wrong. And I think with both the Echo Show 8 and 10, you wanna think about that side reflective surface. If you can find it in order to drive that sound out into your room. I was doing a lot of testing in order to find out things like this and I did some other testing that allowed me to measure the absolute loudness coming out of these speakers and I think you're going to be pretty surprised by the results. Now the Echo Show 5, it got up to about 112 decibels. That compared to the Echo Show 8 which came out at 117 decibels, again out the side, and the Echo Show 10 which came in at that same 117 decibels as the Echo Show 8. Now I can hear a lot of you probably going, oh wait, am I just getting taken spending the extra here? And remember I said this is a sound system, this is not just a couple of speakers. What has happened here is that Amazon is driving a lot of sound out of different speakers and out of the top that woofer is producing great bass sound. So you're going to experience a more complete or a more well-rounded sound coming out of this speaker. For most of us, we're not gonna stick our ears directly up to these speakers, so what matters more is when you're out into your room, how do these speakers sound, how loud are they, and what are you gonna get for bang for the buck? Now, when you're out in front of the Echo Show 5, about a meter away, it drops down in terms of that loudness to about 81 decibels. The Echo Show 8 and 10 perform better giving you 97 decibels, but that wasn't directly in front of the speaker. Again, that was beside the speaker measured about a meter away. So that reflection becomes so important to get the most out of these speakers. One important thing to note about these speakers is that you're going to have access to, again, all of the same exact services across these. So audiobooks, podcasts, music, those are all more based on where you live in the world rather than the speaker that you purchase. The other thing that a lot of people wonder about these is whether or not they're going to work with your Fire TV stick as a speaker. That's actually not available any longer on any of these Echo shows. So you're going to end up having to purchase just an Echo or an Echo Studio or one of the other speakers you see on screen. But what's actually gonna matter to you is how the speaker sounds. This is how you will experience the sound out of these speakers in the different locations. When we're talking about playing audio, I think it's pretty clear that the Echo Show 10 is definitely the best speaker. The Echo Show 8 does split the difference, but I find the improvement, if you're big on music, to be enough to actually step up to that Echo Show 10. I know that it's pretty obvious that one of these screens rotates and the others do not, but there are physical differences that really will matter to you when it comes to these. But Hang on, let's be honest, the fact that this rotates is a pretty big difference, but it manifests in a few ways. 
It doesn't go fully around though. It goes 175 degrees and then it has to turn around and go that full 175 the other way. Plus it's a tiltable screen and that does matter in a lot of cases because these are highly reflective surfaces. So you'll end up seeing a lot of lights and that tilt capability really becomes important unless you go out and you purchase some relatively inexpensive stands for these. But that screen rotation matters for another reason. You see, this requires a really big footprint in your home. And even when we're just talking about behind these speakers, the Echo Show 5 only requires three inches. The Echo Show uh, 8 only requires four inches, but you would need to give this a diameter of 10 inches to make sure that it could rotate all the way around. That might not matter to you that it can rotate all the way around, but I can tell you that I've been personally surprised at how quick this screen runs into a wall, especially in a corner. You don't get that much rotation because of that big footprint. The height is obviously really different too between these three and this means that these can often be placed just about anywhere in your home whereas this needs a little more thought. Another fairly big physical difference actually comes in around the microphones. Now with the speaker power you have to consider this. So right here are your two microphones on the Echo Show 5 and you will actually find the exact same placement on your Echo Show 8. I do find with the Echo Show 8 having those two microphones up there, I find that sometimes it doesn't hear as well as the Echo Show 5 or the Echo Show 10. Now the reason the Echo Show 10 hears me really well and I think the best out of all of these is because they have two on the top, they have one behind here and they have one in the front. So as this is rotating around your space, you actually get picked up no matter where you are. And even though this speaker is quite loud, it can still hear me really well. One of the biggest differences you're going to notice is across the whole series here. And what I'm talking about is the lack of what is called the 3.5 millimeter output jack. This was available on previous generations. So you're, if you're after that, you may actually want to go and look at picking up a previous generation of these devices. There's another pretty big physical difference here and it actually comes from the power supplies. Now, the size is exactly the same. These are exactly the same width and height and everything, but there's a number on these that's different. The 15 watt one goes in the Echo Show 5 and the 30 watt one goes in both the Echo Show 8 and the Echo Show 10. That extra power usage goes into things like the screen and the speakers, but it also goes into some of the other hardware differences that we have here. Now, the processors are one of those differences, and this is physical, but internal to these devices. These both have what's called the MediaTek 8183 and actually the Echo Show 10 has an 8183 in it as well. But what's extra in the Echo Show 10 is called the Amazon AZ1 Neural Processor. And the idea with this is that it will help over time with AI and machine learning to learn what it is you do normally or more on a regular basis. So this has an advantage over time of learning some of your patterns and producing better results, faster responses to your regular queries. And that will start to show up more and more as we go forward. And also as Amazon makes their voice assistant sound more natural, which they have said that processor is specifically for. For almost every feature that you'll want to use you're going to need these devices to be connected to Wi-Fi. It really doesn't matter which one you purchase. The Wi-Fi in all of these are exactly the same. Moving on to Bluetooth, it's exactly the same across these three. And actually what's really nice about Bluetooth connectivity is, number one, you can connect to another speaker and then request music to be played. So if you don't wanna use this speaker, well, I get it. And you can Bluetooth to another and use that. But the other option actually allows you to not be connected to Wi-Fi. This is the Bluetooth being connected for one of these devices to your smartphone or to your tablet 
tablet and this allows you to play from any music service. You might have heard of Amazon Sidewalk and really what Amazon Sidewalk is is a combination of a number of technologies in order for you to be able to get outside your home with your smart home devices much further than you would with things like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But this has been implemented in one of the first ways in a really important way that has changed how I view this device. See, Amazon has another brand called Ring and you probably know them as a security company. They have doorbells, video doorbells, but they also have a bunch of security devices that require a Ring bridge. That is now not necessarily the case because you can use one of these or the new Echo fourth generation to become the Ring Bridge, therefore eliminating an additional smart home hub in your home. Sidewalk will help in certain situations to get you notifications from a smart home camera, even if your home doesn't have connectivity to the internet. So this is a really important function for the future of the Amazon platform. And actually they've included something else that really doesn't require the internet either. And they're just getting started implementing those features as well. That is a Zigbee hub that sits on the Echo Show 10 and not on these two. That Zigbee Hub allows you to directly connect things like motion sensors, contact sensors, light bulbs, light switches that are Zigbee. And I'm sure there will be other products that you want to have a look at as well. Now there's only certain ones that are compatible with this, but this does again eliminate the need for certain people to have another hub. A lot of people will use something like Samsung SmartThings or Hubitat or other more complex solutions in order to have that Zigbee or Z-Wave connectivity. Now there's no Z-Wave connectivity here, but Zigbee is available. Using those Zigbee devices, you can do things like set up routines and automations with those directly connected devices. And they actually, in a lot of cases, do not require the internet in order for those to execute. So this is something that is changing with this device. That's not available over here. Those routines are still available, but you're going to be be connecting to other services or other hubs in order to do that. It's really easy for me to tell you the cost of these three products, but there's some other costs that will hit you over time. You might have subscriptions that will hit you and these will be the same across them. A lot of people end up with an Amazon Prime subscription because you get that first level of Amazon Music. If you wanna go deeper, get HD level music or you wanna get access to Amazon's entire Prime Music library, you'll have to step up to another level of subscription there. But that Prime subscription actually gets you access to Prime Video and a number of other things here. So you're actually getting a lot with that and I tend to think that that subscription is worth it. But there's that other cost here that is power. If you left all of these speakers on sitting idle with the camera, the microphone and the screen on for an entire year, I would ask you what you're doing. But secondly, you would spend this per speaker based on North American averages for power costs. The screen is a minor contributor to this. So this is 0.4 watts constantly being used by that screen, 1.1 watts and 1.4 watts. When you turn off the camera or you close the shutter on these, you're actually going to get the least amount of savings for that camera on the Echo Show 10, which is strange given it's 13 megapixel camera, but the biggest power draw tends to be the speaker. And what I did is I set up a number of tests. I turned off the microphone, I turned off the camera, and I even turned off the screens on these, and then I connected them to Bluetooth and started playing music. I moved it through the volume range at 10% incrementally, and I measured power results with a fairly consistent sounding song all playing throughout. What's going to surprise you is that the Echo Show 8 in many tests actually used more power to play at 100% volume, more than the Echo Show 10 and definitely a lot more than the Echo Show 5. Now because this is a comparison review and I don't want to bore you to tears, I'm going to refer you actually to a report that I produced. This is an ebook available here on YouTube that you can purchase or on Amazon's Kindle bookstore. You can go and get 
get all kinds of details about that testing and the different levels of power and how these speakers perform in different situations. The cameras are really different now between these and in our previous generation of Echo Show devices, we really didn't have good cameras. Nowadays though, the Echo Show 5 has the smallest or the weakest camera at two megapixels, whereas both the Echo Show 8 and Echo Show 10 have way better 13 megapixel cameras that enable you to do quite a bit. The video calling is so much better on these two devices and they actually have an auto framing feature that allows you to move a little bit within your space and still have the camera kind of zoom in or zoom out and follow you around the room. Obviously, the screen rotation feature here adds another dimension to this 13 megapixel camera and you can disable or enable that screen rotation feature. It's not something you have to live with. There you go. Look at that. You can zoom back. Yeah, that's pretty good, hey? Yeah. Wave to yourself. So look. Can you see that? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Turn off or turn on self view. Oh, and then you're like, whoa, where'd you go? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the video off. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. But those larger megapixel cameras on the 10 and the 8 actually enable us to go a little bit further with automation in our home. And number one, you can create routines like this that will eliminate the cost around the screen and its associated power usage. These are very simple to set up. The screen will just turn off and that's because these video cameras can be used to detect people or to detect when people have left the room. What's important to note is that it's not gonna work in the dark and that's one big issue here with these cameras, the way they're working and the sensors on these devices. It's not like you can walk into a pitch black room and have Amazon turn on the lights for you, but you can get it to turn them off over time if you've left the room. The Echo Show 5, you can't do that recognizing of people entering into a space and therefore it's not really a home security camera, which these can double as. And I've even seen people setting up situations with the Echo Show 8 where they're using it as a baby monitor and they buy a second one of these or they're using the Amazon application to look at the uh, video screen here, or the video feed from this kind of a camera and see their baby. Plus there's actually a beta feature now available that you can, if your baby's crying near this speaker, have it pop up on any of these smart displays. In terms of video calling, it's important to note that really you're only going to be able to call other Amazon smart display users and that's across all three of these. You can initiate a video call or receive a video call on these devices. Plus in certain situations you can drop in on people that are set up inside of what's called the care hub feature. But there is a bit of a difference if you're someone who uses Zoom quite a bit. Now, as of today, what is available is Zoom on the Echo Show 8 and the Echo Show 10, or at least officially here. I actually still can't get this working and it is region restricted, so you'll want to find out about that first. The Echo Show 5 does not have the ability to be a Zoom video calling or video conferencing device. I'm not sure that will ever come. It's kind of too small of a device as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, you can use all three of these devices to take photos or to take videos and send them as messages to friends. Plus, you can react to things you've received from your friends and family or the people set up in the Amazon Miss A application. As you start to narrow down on the device you're going to purchase, it's important to know the similarities as much as it is the differences. And I'm betting there's a lot of questions still hanging out there, so if you have them still at this point, go ahead, put them in the comments, and I get to all of the comments here on YouTube, or at least all the ones that I see. But you can count on the following things being exactly the same, or at least mostly the same, other than some of those details we talked about earlier in the video. And the first one is that it's the same voice assistant between all of these. You can upload or get the celebrity voices that you'd like on all of these devices, and you can call each one the different names that they have available for who I call Miss A. 
The speed of the responses will be generally the same, and I say that because the main processor is the same, but remember that AZ1 processor sitting over here? That could change things over time. This is definitely more ready for the future of Amazon's voice assistant. All of these have all of the same productivity features. They can connect to your calendar and your email, create custom lists and your shopping list, and even send that shopping list to your spouse or friends or whomever you'd like. Plus you can create timers and alarms with all of these and you can manage them on the screen if you'd like. They are all going to help you connect and control a smart home, plus get all kinds of other information. They have access to the news and podcast services, all of those services are going to be the same, including video and music. You are going to be able to shop on Amazon as well with these. They will be connected to your Amazon account. And yes, all of these require an Amazon account in order to set them up. Plus, you're going to have access to features like Amazon Guard, which again is more region restricted than it is restricted on these devices, and things like the Energy Dashboard. All of those features are going to be exactly the same on these devices. If you're ready to make a purchase, well, there are links down below to all of these Echo Shows and some of those accessories that I talked about today. But if you're not ready, I get it, you need a little more information or a little more help, and that's why I created the playlist that's sitting right there. That playlist has in-depth reviews, comparisons to other products that you might be considering, plus some details on some of the features or the capabilities that I talked about today. So go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.